Um, any players uh, opt out or any uh, fears in that uh, regard? Any uh, indications that may be a problem? No, I have not heard of any of our players doing that. So um, we're pleased to announce it. John, do, 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 are you placing any players on the on the COVID list at this point, or where are you guys on it? I don't, I don't have any to report yet, so it's a daily process. Uh, so far, so good, uh, but I uh, don't have any to report today. Thank you, John. To Sean Reed from The Athletic. Um, what have been your first impressions of Marcus Mariota, you know, with him coming off of an injury year last year? <laughs> well, I've been impressed. Uh, number one thing with Marcus uh, was to get healthy. He had a shoulder problem. He had an ankle problem. It's a real credit to him to uh, get the injury rehab done during all of this uh, social distancing and the distraction of finding a doctor and being safe. He did a great job getting himself healthy and learning our system. That'll give him a chance to be Marcus Mariota. Hi, John. Um, Levi Damon from USA Today, SMG. I was wondering, you know, with this, what's your understanding of this deadline that you have to cut from 90 players to 80 players? And what uh, what difficulties do you think you're going to have in doing that? Well, the tough decision is uh, if you keep your roster at a certain number, they don't want so many people in the building at the same time. Um, so we're wrestling with what to do, uh, obviously. Uh, if you release players uh, to get down to 80, or you can keep the team practicing and around each other together, uh, you got to release 10 players basically that you really haven't had a chance to even see in pads. So uh, Mike Mayock and I are discussing it daily, and we're going to do what we think is best for our team. John, to go back to uh, Marcus really quick. In your conversations with him, how does it seem like he's picking up the playbook so far? I know it's early, but what's your first impressions of what he's been able to do mentally? Uh, it's been impressive. And I think, uh, you know, being in the room, a little chat session with Derek Carr every day has really helped him. Derek is very advanced and very quick mentally, and Marcus is as well. So he's learned it fast, and um, he's applied it here in the last couple of days with our rookies on the field in a walkthrough. John, Vinny Bonsignor with the Las Vegas Rangers Colonel. Um, Derek's going into his third year uh, in your offense. Um, given the additions that you guys have made offensively over the last couple of years, do you feel um, you're in a good place to break through that, you know, under, under 20 points per game barrier and get into an area where, where you feel like you guys need to be to, to be competitive and, and fight for a playoff spot? Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm not going to say much more than that. We... Um, we need a healthy supporting cast. It helps when Trent Brown plays. It helps when Gabe Jackson's healthy. It helps when we have Josh Jacobs back there. I think the healthy Tyrell Williams, the addition of some of these receivers will be helpful. Uh, we stunk last year. I stunk uh, inside the one yard line. Uh, that would really help our offense if I can call some better plays and give these guys a chance to poke it in from inside the two or three yard line. That's where uh, your points per game and all the statistics uh, will improve. Uh, we got stuffed twice in Green Bay. We got stuffed against Denver. We got stuffed against Tennessee. We got stuffed uh, too many times down inside the two yard line and uh, that's all my fault. We got to address our tight, tight, tight goal line offense to be a good scoring team. Do you feel like having more options like a Lynn Bowden Jr. like a, a Ruggs, guys like that, do you think that that's going to help expand the playbook when you guys are in that red zone in those those areas well we got a big enough playbook you know we got to do a better job calling the right plays in the right situations and sometimes um you know we gotta we gotta find it within our, our ourselves to find a way to get it done but i'm not going to make any predictions about rugs or or bowden until i see him live uh, over the next few weeks but we have a lot of plays a lot of thoughts a lot of high aspirations and expectations for them Don, this is Ron Carpenter from Sports Illustrated talking to the coaches at Alabama. They really credited you and Mike for seeing things about what others didn't. Obviously, his speed was evident. 
but the fact that when it wasn't a play for him, he was downfield blocking and he was tough and he wasn't afraid to be involved in running plays. How much does that help Josh? Not only to have a guy that will stretch the field, but now somebody who will block down the field. And how much did that stick out to you and Mike Stern? A lot remains to be seen. Uh, we drafted Josh Jacobs out of Alabama. He wasn't their feature back. Um, we drafted Ruggs. He wasn't their featured receiver. So uh, we got to prove that we made the right pick. And to do it today is, is, is not really responsible on my behalf. But we like Ruggs. We like a lot more about Ruggs and his block. We didn't take him in the first round to block. Uh, that wasn't going to be his primary role. But it, it is an ingredient that he has his toughness, uh, his every down competitiveness that has a chance to, to make him a great player in this league. John, it's it's uh, Scott Bear from NBC. Um, uh, uh, have, having Derek Carr do so many of those uh, kind of players only uh, workouts in, in the uh, Las Vegas area, um, including with some of these new guys um, to your system, do you think that that could could give you guys a leg up um, um, as you guys get started with, with with training camp? Just because those guys have been able to apply some things that they have learned um, in, in, during your virtual offseason program. I didn't have anything to do with it. I don't know anything about the workouts. I just saw uh, other teams doing it, so I'm sure Derek did the same thing. But uh, it's a credit to Carr. It's a credit to his. Uh, I think his, his passion for the game, his will to, to win, and um, his leadership. But I don't know much about those workouts. John, how you guys have dealt with moving as well as this whole the pandemic and the offseason. What have been the biggest challenges of doing both at the same time? Well, you know, it's, I'm no different than everybody else. Uh, it's just been hard. You know, I worry about my kids, my f mom and dad, my family, my brothers, uh, my friends. You know, I'm worried about all, all our players. You know, I'm, I'm really uh, worried about Las Vegas. I love this place. We were, we were eager to have the draft here. We were eager to make some friends here and have some real uh, exciting times as we make our, our move here. We have the best facility, the best stadium I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot. I haven't been a former broadcaster. You know, I miss being around people. I miss, I'm a handsy guy. I like to hug people. I high five them. Um, it's been tough on America. It's been tough on the world. And I just want to keep reiterating that to our players. Uh, we got to beat the virus. Uh, that's that's, that's, a, that's our, our challenge right now. We got to beat the virus to have a chance to even play. John, how much responsibility uh, on the end of the players uh, to, to be diligent in um, you know, adhering to all the protocols, not just while they're in the building, but you know, outside of the building? Um, you know, for this team to get through a season as in a way that manages COVID-19 as best as possible? That's, that's uh, to me, that's the number one goal. You know, what you do in the building is, is being evaluated in the strength room, in the training room, on the field, in the meeting rooms. You can't evaluate everything that you do off the field. So we have a, a players committee. We have great leadership here that understands that uh, one mistake can uh, be our demise. Um, one mistake can bring us all down in, in, in a real bad way. And it's not just coming to football. It can create a terrible illness. So I want to dominate when we leave the building. We want to crush this virus. We want to beat this virus into the ground. Um, and I can use those words because it's not on our schedule. But it is an opponent that we have not been able to beat. And um, it can really break you down physically. I know a lot of people that have had it and have it, and it's an awful thing, and we don't want to have anything to do with it but beating it. John, with the, with, on that note, because of the virus and the pandemic, you've, there's obviously been no offseason, and now there's is looking to be no preseason either. And that seems that it would affect the undrafted rookies probably more than anyone else. Are you able to do anything to try to make up for the lack of you know offseason and preseason? Or what are you doing to try to make that up? Well, we're trying to be as creative as possible. You can't watch practice or be around, but we're trying uh, really hard to be on the cutting edge of technology. Um, coaching and teaching our system, making our uh, philosophies uh, standard for everybody. We're trying to raise the bar around here. Um, I've never met Corey Littleton, never met him. 
You know, we paid this guy a lot of money to be our, our featured defensive player. There's a lot of free agents I have not had hands-on contact with either. And we're not the Lone Ranger. Everybody in the league is going through this. We have to do the best we can. It's not going to be an equitable, fair season. Some teams are going to be hit hard by this virus. Some teams might not. Some teams might have fans. Some teams might have cardboard cutouts. I don't know. But uh, we just got to deal with it, and we got to try to be creative. Fortunately, I think we've got a great coaching staff that can really teach the game. And um, that's what I'm relying on the most. John, it's Ed Green from the Review Journal. I know you talked about rugs, but um, in your experience in terms of rookies beyond quarterbacks, are, are there positions that translate better, especially with a pause like this, or is it just up to the individual in a rookie? Uh, we've been good uh, fast-tracking players at every position. I think last year was a great indication. I think over the last couple of years, a lot of young players have played for us. That was the goal when we got here. Uh, we, you could say we excavated the land here in terms of the roster the first year, but we have built it back with young players, Max Crosby, Clee Farrell, uh, obviously Josh Jacobs and Renfro. Uh, Colt Miller started as a rookie. Brandon Parker started as a rookie. So uh, we don't have any uh, doubt that Trayvon Mullen, if he can start, Arnett can start. And John Abram was an opening day starter as well. So we're not afraid to play the young guys, but they got to earn it. John, considering all the additions you made through the draft and free agency this offseason on defense, what are your expectations for the defense this season in terms of their improvement overall? Well, first, we better eliminate the penalties. You know, where we rank in this league on defensive penalties is a reflection of me, and we have to fix that, and we're going to fix it. And I think Rod Marinelli is going to be a big part of that. Staying on sides. Uh, some of those penalties are ridiculous and they've got to be solved. Uh, we can't be 31st in the league and generating turnovers and be a, a good football team in this league. We got to get more turnovers and uh, it starts with pressure up front. But I think we got a chance to be much, much better. Our second year players, I think the addition of Kwiatkowski and Littleton solves a problem for us. The return of John Abram, uh, an experienced Trayvon Mullen. I think Joyner in year two of the system will be better. And I, I really think the key to our defense is eliminating penalties, creating more turnovers. And I think Malik Collins uh, is a name we got to circle and look at every single day. I think that three technique in this defense has to raise hell, and he's got to do it for us. John, what are the challenges of incorporating all those new guys in on defense when you didn't have the offseason, don't have the preseason, have limited pads? How, how difficult is that going to be? It'll be a challenge. And we're going to try um, our best to put them under as much pressure as possible with formations and different tempos to try to get them ready because they got to open on the road against a new coach and a new quarterback and a lot of unknowns. And then uh, early in the season, I think you'll see Tom Brady and Drew Brees, and um, I know they're going to turn up the tempo and turn up the heat on us, so we got to be ready. Coach, to your point, there's uh, the, the second and third year defensive linemen. What do they have to do to take that leap forward with Rod Marinelli? What are you expecting them to put in the work in order to, to reach that next level? Well, they got to prove they belong in this league. They got to prove they can be frontline guys. PJ Hall, Hurst, Key, those are three guys that, uh, you know, we use high draft picks on. Arden's got to stay healthy. PJ Hall, uh, I'm anxious to see where his weight is. He came in overweight last year. Not at that position, can't happen. Mo Hurst has had some good moments, but um, we need these guys to burst on the scene, no question. And getting Rod Marinelli is the best thing I can do to allow that to happen. I, I really believe he's as good a coach as I've ever seen. And uh, when it comes to developing defensive line, I saw him do it with Simeon Rice. I saw him do it with a number of players along uh, his career, and I'm counting on that happening. We have time for two more questions, guys. John, uh, we've seen some players uh, opt out um, across the NFL, and you know, I, important for everyone to be understanding about all that. But have you had conversations with your players, and and do you feel like uh, you're you're in pretty good shape to uh, to start the season with, with pretty much everyone on your roster? Well, you know, everybody has a right to make a decision. So do the coaches, you know, players and coaches. This is a, a virus that is it's just a problem. It's a real problem. So I don't talk about it a lot. I certainly respect every man's opinion. You know, I hate seeing players opt out, but I understand every reason for it. But uh, as I said earlier, we haven't had anybody do that. 
And with that being said, we're going to focus on beating the virus and coming to work again the next day and repeating the process. John, what will it take for this team collectively to, to make that next step and make the playoffs? I've said a few things today. I think we were pretty good last year. Um, you know, we lost a, a game at the end uh, against Jacksonville. And like I said, we failed inside the tight red zone against Denver. Um, we got to stay healthy, number one. You can't have a lot of guys in the training room. You got to have your best players play to win in this league. And uh, I think staying healthy, I think the emergence of some of these second year players and rookies will help us. Um, and again, we got to create some turnovers on defense. We got to eliminate the penalties and we got to close out a drive inside to one. Those are some things I've already talked about. And I got to coach better. Ain't no doubt about that. Okay, last question, Amber. John, I just wanted to clarify. Did you say that you have no indication of any of your players opting out? I haven't had anybody tell me that. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Have a good day, you guys.